All right, good afternoon, good evening, student athletes. I'm glad that we're all in the space. Welcome alumni, welcome uh, all the coaches that are in the space as well. Um, I'm definitely excited for this moment to introduce Taz Deshaun, who is our guest speaker, who is not only just our guest speaker, but he's also part of the, the Stonebrook family. Um, he's a Stonebrook alum on the, uh, from, uh, from the football team. I'm not gonna give too much information about Taj because I'm gonna let him do his thing. Uh, but I, what I definitely wanna go over is uh, why he's in the space um, and how, obviously, as we designed the curriculum this semester, Taj was a huge part in, in this design, um, especially because this is something that he's very passionate about um, in terms of in terms of student athletes and, and um, a post college post college transition and success. Um, everything that we've learned this semester from tailoring your resume to advertising yourself to promoting yourself, and obviously, you, you know, your thirty second pitch has been has been led has been led to this moment. Um, obviously, over the last couple of weeks, we've, we've been working on, you know, uh, uh, your career action plan, your, you know, your uh, meeting with uh, Emilio for your career, uh, uh, your career coaching, peer to peer mentoring, um, uh, the obviously peer resume reviews with each other. And I think that I think what I've seen, especially with that assignment is how how serious you took that assignment, how critical you were of each other's resumes and how much thoughtful and insightful feedback you gave each other. Uh, and, I, and I think, that, I think that, that, was, that was beautiful to see, um, especially coming from you know, students that were paired from different teams. I didn't, and some of you may have, may have not even known each other. Um, and, and the advice that you gave each other was amazing. So I'm very proud of the work that you've done this semester. We still have a lot of work to do. Um, and the next portion of, of uh, I guess the last, uh, the last two, three weeks of, of, of class is going to be focusing on uh, the, uh, the mock interviews and, and, and actually putting things into action. Uh, so I'm going to pass it up to, to, to Taj. Taj, do your thing. Um, I'm excited to have you in the space. And let's go. Izzy, first and foremost, man, uh, it's, it's just a pleasure to be here. As one and I were talking beforehand, just how amazing it is, how much things have changed at Stony Brook. Like, if we had an Izzy on campus, I might be in a totally different spot right now, man. Uh, I might have had a softer landing after college. So I just want to acknowledge you for everything that you do. Um, before we even get rolling, I want to share something with you guys. I love sharing this before I go into a uh, – I'm on my phone. Bear with me. Everybody wants to blow me up when I'm, when I'm doing a talk. But this is something that I keep on my desk at all times. I don't know if you guys can see this. This is like a statue of this person right here is pulling the other person up. and um, at a time in my life when I was done with football and I was really struggling with the direction that my life was going in, you know, I was no longer Taj the football player. Um, I was unemployed at the time. I was living back home. I was drinking a lot. And I mean like drinking a lot, like more than I was drinking in college because I was trying to mask some of the things that I was going through, which I will get into in just a second. And uh, just for the record, Izzy, Izzy asked me to come in here and talk about thriving after sports. So I'm not here to like scare you guys about my experience. I just want to share from personal experience because that experience is all I have. And I hope that I know we have a mixed group of, you know, underclassmen, upperclassmen. I hope that by hearing my story and uh, some of the advice that I'm going to share with you and, and me doing some of the things that I'm doing now, I hope it helps you avoid some of the pitfalls that I went through. Um, so anyway, with this statue, my mom, she was out shopping one day. Like I said, I was I was in a bad place, you know, and uh, she was like, I was out shopping and I just grabbed this for you. Something about it spoke to me and it made me want to get this for you. It made me you know, God spoke to me and told me to give you this statue. And what it symbolizes to me is just to continue uplifting others. And at a time when I was so focused on myself, I was, I was feeling, you know, I was full of self-pity because it's like, I'm not a football player anymore. I don't know who I am. Um, that having that to look at every single day made a huge difference for me because continuing to focus on making a contribution to other people. And I know we're here to talk about life after your sport, right? Because that's what's going to bring you to the top of whatever field you're in is making a contribution to your fellow human being. So staying in that frame of mind is what's allowed me to create a beautiful life for myself. Like it didn't happen overnight, but being able to focus on how I can impact others, how I can contribute to, the, to others in some way, shape or form has taken me a lot farther and opened up doors for me that I could ever, you know, doors that I didn't even imagine would be open. And of course, with the help of some amazing people. So before we really get into it, because I just I tend to speak from the heart. I don't have like a PowerPoint or anything to share with you guys. You know, I'm not I'm not Eric Thomas. I'm not ET, the hip hop preacher. You know, I'm not going to start yelling and screaming at you and try to get you motivated. I'm just going to be speaking from the heart, like whatever, you know, whatever God or the universe or source, whatever you believe in. I'm going to just let that flow through me. But one thing I suggest is that um, I definitely su suggest you take notes because as you can tell, I talk fast. I think fast. I just I'm go, go, go. So I can guarantee you that something I say tonight 
is going to resonate with you, right? And if it doesn't hit you tonight, it'll hit you later. So you want to make sure you write it down, think about it, take it with you. Um, some of you freshmen, it might not hit you till you're a junior. And some of you juniors and seniors, once you graduate, it might not hit you till, you know, you've been out in the, the quote unquote real world for a couple of years. So with that being said, um, as Izzy mentioned, um, my name is Taj Deshaun. I'll give you just a quick intro so you know who, who you're dealing with here. Uh, I played football at Stony Brook in 2013. That's I graduated in 2013. Um, had a lot of challenges, and I mean a lot of challenges, which I'll probably get into. But what I do today is I'm an athlete career transition coach. And what that is, is um, I actually, I help athletes go from a place where they're trying to figure out their next steps, mostly athletes who have graduated from college or just coming off of a professional career. So it's really, my work is really pinpointed at athletes coming out of college. Uh, I'm also an author. I got my book in the background, but I got a copy right here too. So I wrap the sports, you know, I made sure I said copies to Izzy and Coach Weave, of course. Um, I have a second book coming out in a couple of months. It's called Athletes Entrepreneur, detailing my journey of how I've sort of uh, built a business and, and put systems and teams in place around everything that I'm doing to serve the athlete community. Uh, I host several different podcasts. One of them is called Need a Copy. Casey Williams, man, you got to, Casey Williams, reach out, bro. I'll get you a copy, a signed copy. Um, I host a podcast called Thrive After Sports, which is, which is the same name as my book. So enough about me. All right. So when I came home, like I was saying, I was completely lost, guys. Like I'm talking about living a high life at Stony Brook. You know, you know how it is. You know, you take the train to the city. You got the stipend check. I'll be blowing the stipend check in the club. Just living the life, you know, being an independent, a free, independent young man. And here I am back home in California, Southern California. I'm back in my childhood bedroom, you know, uh, Waking up every day, looking at all my little Pop Warner trophies. You know, my mom is telling me to take out the trash. So my pride was hurt. My ego was hurt. And I felt lost because survival mode. Like my main focus was I got to get some money. I just wanted to move out and feel free again. And I felt like I had not done a good job of preparing myself. That's why I said at the beginning, I'm so grateful for what, what Izzy is doing and, and all the other team members at Stony Brook for what they're putting into place. Because... I was just, I hadn't, I felt like I was back at square one. Like, how do I go from growing up in this bedroom to going off to college with all these big plans of coming back home, you know, being the first person in my family to graduate from college and come home thinking I was just going to land a six figure job. But here I am with nothing going on. So that's where all the drinking comes in. Right. Um, went through a, I spiraled down into a deep depression because like I said, I felt like I had failed. You know, I thought I was going to come back home and, and, be able to, if I didn't make it to the league, at least use my degree to land a solid job, which I didn't do because I didn't adequately prepare, right? So I was desperate at that time when I wasn't drinking or just, you know, trying to distract myself and going out partying all the time. I would wake up in the morning and I would go on Indeed and just kind of aimlessly search for jobs. Just like, let me see what I can find today. I think I can get this one. I don't need much experience, like that type of thing. But guys, it's so much deeper than just looking for a job because beneath the surface, what was really going on is that I was trying to attach my identity to something like as quickly as possible. Like I said, there was a huge void where I felt like because I was no longer an athlete or no longer a football player and everyone knew me as Taj the football player because I didn't have that anymore, I was desperately trying to attach it to something. Just so when people would ask me, well, Taj, what are you doing now? Oh, I can say, well, I got this. Or, I'm working in this industry. or I got this job. And what happens is when our identities are attached to the game for so many years, a lot of athletes, and I see this in my work now, a lot of athletes just scramble, right? And when you have the athletic mindset, don't get me wrong, whatever, whatever job you end up, you end up in after you're done playing, you can be the top person there because you have that athletic go-getter mindset. But think about how much better you would be in your field or in your role if you were actually 100 percent intentional about where you were going. Right. And of course, it takes a little bit of trial and error because you've been in school for four years. Right. So you haven't really had any experience. You don't know what it's like out there in the, in the workforce. But what's better for what's better than trial and error is 100 percent intentional action. So like I said, instead of going internally to be like, who is Taj? What do I want? Like, what kind of career do I want? Where do I see myself? Like, I just turned 30 last week. I had no vision of that I would be doing this at 30. I had no vision at all. You know, I was 22 at the time. I didn't even know, like, where I was going to get my next paycheck from or, you know, how I was going to pay my phone bill. So we try to, I see this too much where, and this is a word of caution to you guys. When you're done playing, don't don't be so quick to try to attach your identity to something external. You want to start internally. So external things is like a job title or how much money am I making? Or, you know, we got the family dinners. You could tell you could tell grandma, hey, you know, I'm I'm working at, I don't know, enterprise or something now. Like, don't don't get so caught up on that. You want to make sure that 
you're, you're being 100% intentional about your internal state. That means taking care of yourself, checking in with yourself. If you need to talk to somebody about what you're experiencing, that, that loss of identity, make sure you do that. But also make sure that you are being intentional about where you're going. Because in order, like, I'm gonna tell you like this, the value that you bring to the marketplace after you graduate will be determined by the value that you create. I'm gonna say that again. The value that you bring to the marketplace is determined by the value that you create. So once again, I was back home, no experience, nothing going on for myself, but I wasn't creating. I wasn't trying to find a way to contribute. I was just waiting on someone to knock on the door and give me a job. So if you're a senior, just understand that when you graduate, you're gonna be going into a space where I always say like you're a freshman in life again. You know what I mean? And if you take that approach, it keeps you from being, from thinking you're supposed to graduate and be the CEO somewhere, right? It keeps you from thinking that someone is waiting on you with a six-figure job when you graduate. If you can humble yourself to realize, okay, I'm starting fresh. I'm a freshman in life. I'm looking at two, three, four years before I really start to find my rhythm. And that approach changes everything. So you have to develop yourself, right? And I'm not just talking to my upperclassmen right now. Like, I want you freshmen to start thinking about this the same way that you're developing yourself in your sport so that you can ball out for the next three, four years. I want you thinking, I want you taking that same approach to developing yourself afterwards. So when you have some free time, spend some time thinking about what you want your life to look like. Because I always say how you want to live is more important than what you want to do. People get hung up on, on the doing part. What I want to do. Oh, I want to be a lawyer. Oh, I want to be a doctor, right? Something I see a lot is a lot of athletes want to get into sales. Because people will tell you, hey, uh, sales is uh, it's competitive. You can go in there making a lot of money. But if you're not someone who's comfortable, you know, making 200 cold calls and stuff a day, then you're not thinking about how you're living. You're thinking about what you want to do. Uh, same thing with coaching. A lot of athletes, they end up going back into coaching. And there's nothing wrong with that. Some athletes make phenomenal coaches. Look at coach, out at the coach we on here right now. A phenomenal coach. I can tell just by talking to him. But for some people, they would be better served not staying in their comfort zone and thinking, what else can I do outside of athletics, right? So this is what I mean by developing yourself. Uh, another thing I'm really big on is customizing your life. Well, the first time someone told me that, it's, like, they said, Taj, did you know that you can customize your life? I never really thought about it like that before. Because if you think about it, when you come out of college, you're in your early 20s, you still have 70, 80 years of life ahead of you. And once you think about it like that, it becomes less scary and it becomes more exciting because you're at a place where you can literally create your life from scratch. And that's what I'm big on. I want you to come from a place of creation. I want you to, to wake up every day and be in a place where you're like, man, I'm so glad that I'm doing this work. I found my work. Um, so this is something I see a lot of, I shared this before, but a lot of athletes come out, whether it's college or the pros, and it becomes a slippery slope because they never take that time to stop and evaluate and say, now that I'm no longer playing my sport, what kind of life do I actually want to create for myself? And once again, notice I'm using that word create very intentionally. And let me back up for a second, because I know that um, I know that a lot of you guys right now. And now that I think about it, I probably should have addressed this up front, but I know that a lot of you guys are going through a tough time. Like your season may have been canceled. I know the, the football season ended, what, two, three weeks early or something like that. Um, so I don't want to be insensitive and sit here. You know, you might be dealing with some of the stuff I'm talking about right now. Like, wow, I'm no longer an athlete. So someone on this call or someone listening to this recording might be going through that. So I don't want to be insensitive and go into talking about afterwards when you haven't even spent time processing where you're at right now. So to those of you that that applies to, I just want to tell you, be proud of yourself, right? I'm really talking to the seniors right now, especially if you're, you know, you played your last game already. Like you had the opportunity to play a D1 sport. You got your education paid for. So I just want to acknowledge you for a second. I want to tell you um, to take some time to be proud of yourself. You've gotten an experience, you've gotten an opportunity that your peers, the people that you grew up with and went to high school with, they would kill to be in your shoes right now. Like you're in the top, you know, 2% of, of athletes who make it to this level. So congratulations to you. Be proud of yourself. Um, and then also don't look at it as, oh, the game was taken away from me. You just got to jump start on the rest of your life, right? So use this time to create, use this time to, uh, you know, be excited. You have your whole life ahead of you, like I said. So you want to use this time to evaluate and reassess where you're going. And this applies to you, you underclassmen too, because the reality is I keep going back and forth because I know there's, there's a lot of different, there's people at different stages on this call. But if you're a freshman right now, the reality is for the next three, four years, you're going to be living and breathing your sport, traveling, workouts, practice, film, games. Like I've been in your shoes. So trust me when I tell you, it's tough to just be like, oh, I'm going to, you know, I'm 18, 19 years old. I'm going to think about 
what my life is going to look like at 22, 23 and beyond. I know it's easier said than done, but I'm telling you, every second counts. Every moment counts where you can start to prepare early so you don't have to struggle. Like a lot of the athletes that I help are struggling. That's why I do what I do. So the earlier you can start, the better off you'll be. I want to acknowledge that it's early, it's easier said than done. But if, if you can prepare early, you'll be in a much better spot. Even you seniors right now who, you know, your, your season ended early, like you have time to prepare now. Um, another thing I want to share with you is that sports is just one vehicle. So a lot of us, especially me, like, you know, being a first generation college student, a lot of us, we look at our sport as our vehicle to get us out, right? A lot of people, it's their ticket to get them out the hood. Um, for me, like I, I didn't grow up in the hood. I, I'm very fortunate the way I grew up. But to me, I looked at it as, man, my mom and dad didn't finish school. I'm gonna make them proud. I'm gonna go to school. Uh, I'm gonna come home and I'm gonna take care of them, right? So I wanna share with you that just because you're no longer playing your sport, it doesn't mean that you don't have the opportunity to still do great things. Because like I was saying earlier, you can take that athletic mindset and you can apply that into whatever it is that you want to do. Like that, that drive, that ambition that you have to be the best and compete with yourself, that doesn't go anywhere. You just have to find a way to, to repurpose it and put it into something that's meaningful to you. And like I said, from the jump, put it in a way that has an impact on others. Like I know a dude, um, he, okay, he, he always talked about how his, his vision was to buy his mom a house once he made it to the league. He ended up getting... He made it to a camp, but he got cut during camp. So he basically never saw a check from the NFL. But he went on to start a youth camp, right? Training the youth, uh, built it up in his area, basically franchised it out and started different camps in different areas. Use some of that money to reinvest in his business. Use that to reinvest in rental properties. Use those rental properties to invest in more rental properties. Ended up buying his mama house. So football did not buy his mama house, technically speaking. His determination did. His work ethic did. His vision did. And all of you have that same, that same drive inside of you that you can use to accomplish some of those dreams that you may have originally thought your sport was going to accomplish for you. So, like I said, you still have the opportunity to do great things. And not only that, but I want you to re recognize something else that a lot of people are looking up to you. You may not even realize it. People who are older than you look up to you because you play, you know, D1 sports. Like all your little nieces, nephews, uh, you know, siblings, like – these people are looking to see, okay, what are they going to do next? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, they play college ball, but is that the end of your tale? I'm sure we all wait, know way too many people who they were balling, they were the man or they were the woman in college, and then they stopped playing, and now they do who knows what. They just kind of fell off the face of the earth, right? That doesn't have to be you, right? And there's nothing wrong. This is another thing I want to share. There's nothing wrong with taking a job to pay bills. I'm not knocking that. But my whole thing is I don't want anybody getting stuck there because one thing, one good thing I can say about myself is that even though I didn't know what I was doing and I was just kind of job hopping, trying to figure it out, I never settled. I never just got somewhere. And I was like, like my first job out of college, I was selling copy machines for Xerox. I was selling copy machines door to door for Xerox. Imagine like I wouldn't be here today if I was just like, well, I guess this is my career path. You know, I would be 30 years old and I would be like a regional manager of Xerox or something. That's cool. I'm sure the money's great. Don't get me wrong. But that's not who I am. That's not what I want to be doing with my life. I'd rather be here with you guys. So there's a lot of people who get stuck working in the same jobs or the same industries that they got into fresh out of college and they don't even like it. Like, so don't let that be you. Just take that as a word of caution. Like whatever you do in life, don't ever get stuck. Don't ever get complacent and always be looking at how you can find a way that is, uh, find a, a role or find a job or start a business or do something that is more aligned with who you are as a person. Because if you think about it, the people who are the wealthiest, the most successful, who, you know, are always happy all the time, not that anyone's always happy, but some of the happiest people are the people who essentially get paid to be themselves. Like they've blended the lines between work and play. You know what I mean? Like Coach Weave, you know, he, he loves coaching football, so he enjoys his life. You know, Izzy's out here making an impact and, and making history at Stony Brook. Like, I'm sure Izzy doesn't have a problem getting up out of bed in the morning doing his work. You know what I'm saying? Um, only my knees, only my knees. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get you that cvd we're gonna get you that cvd izzy trust me man it's on the way i still got your address from when i sent you the books so i'm gonna send you something i got you um another word of caution while i'm on this topic of not settling for a job is you want to be very cautious about getting caught up into the pattern of doing things just for money the reason i say that is because too many people they, they get so because you can always be doing something that's paying your bills but working on the back end to build something else if that makes sense so if, you, if you're constantly in this pursuit of money, then what happens is when you get all this money, but you're not happy and you're not fulfilled, 
you'll just try to use the money to fill the void. So let me take it back a little bit more to my story. I started out in Xerox, you know, doing sales. Um, then after that, I realized that I wanted to start helping people just like the statue. It comes back to that statue. Once again, I'm like, this ain't it. Yeah. I'm making money, but I got to be doing something that's more aligned with people. So what I did was I made a pivot into recruiting. And before I went into business for myself and found a thrive after sports and all that, I made quite a name for myself in the recruiting industry because I was good at helping people and I could compete with myself. So I say all that to say before when I was doing sales and I was making money, I was throwing that money away. I was at the club every weekend. I bought a house, you know, not a house, an apartment downtown, like overlooking the water, all that type of stuff. But I wasn't, it's all because I was unhappy. And that's, thank you, Izzy. I appreciate you plugging the website, man. But it all comes back to not thinking about how you want to live. It all comes, it all comes back to thinking about what am I doing? How am I going to get money? If you get into that mindset, it's tough to get out of because then you start expanding your expenses, you're spending all this money on stuff you don't need because you're unhappy and then you're trapped and you have to keep doing the job that you don't enjoy because you don't blew all this money at all these different places versus understanding that if you stay on your path and do things that are true to you, then the money is coming regardless. The money is coming regardless. Um, another thing, listen, I think that I'm trying to be careful because I know that you've had other speakers come on here and tell you certain things. So I don't want to disrespect anybody, but. Hey, give us the real, <laughs> man. We want the real. Thank you, Coach Lee. Thank you, man. Just, just um, give it to give us to his raw. Come on, man. You got it. I think that too many people get caught up on like trying to tell you to take the safe route. So I'm a risk taker, man. I think, I think athletes make great entrepreneurs. I think all of you on here as athletes, you should consider building something on the side right? Don't be dumb like I did. Don't quit your job and just try to start a business and go into it like just to do it. But look for ways that you can have an impact. Um, and you may, like I was saying earlier, you may have to do what you have to do so that you can do what you can do. What I mean by that is I have worked after I left recruiting, I started thriving after sports and uh, I found out very quickly. It's, it's not easy. Just because just you have an idea doesn't mean you're going to make money right away. So it took me some time to build up my ideas and build systems and teams to where I could actually have an income doing the work that was important to me. But in between that time, I worked all kinds of random jobs, Some, nothing to do with my job experience, nothing to do with what was on my resume. But the reason I was doing those jobs is because it was giving me a way to earn income and pay my bills. But the types of jobs I was choosing was keeping me fresh to build my business, right? Because I always tell people there's a huge difference between your job and your work. And the reason that I'm here talking to you guys tonight is because I want you to, to really focus on finding your work. You can get a job, but use the job as a way to keep you afloat while you're doing your work, your life's work, while you were put here on this earth, right? Everybody has, it may sound cheesy or whatever, but I believe, and I've seen this, everybody has a reason why they're here. We're all here for a very certain, for a very special gift, and you have to find that and cultivate what that is. And a lot, I run into a lot of people that are like, Taj, man, I want to do something else. I just... I feel like I can't find my purpose, right? I feel like I, I can't find that thing. And my advice to them is that it's not going to just, you're not going to be walking down the street one day and the clouds are going to part and you're going to hear angels singing and it's just going to be like, oh, you're supposed to be doing this. And you're like, finally, I found my purpose. I've been waiting. I've been waiting for this to fall out the sky. It doesn't happen like that, you guys. Like I told you, I found this through staying close to helping people, realizing that that was something I enjoy. So your purpose, your mission in life, it has to be cultivated. And once you find it, don't let it go. Don't let it go. Do what you have to do. I've, I've installed glass. I've worked all kinds of jobs for, you know, low hourly wages. Um, I could have gone back to the, you know, to some of the industries I was working in using my degree. But I knew that if I did that, yeah, the money would be cool, but I'd be too exhausted after work to really build, you know? So that's when it really happens. That's, that's advice I give to everybody. Find something that, find your work, find something you can latch on to and build on that. And then do your work early in the morning before your job. Do your work when you get home from your job. Do your work on the weekends. When all your friends are out clubbing, like the club is going to be there, guys. Trust me when I tell you, the clubs are not going anywhere. They're shut down right now anyway, most of them. So you might as well do your work on the weekends. You know what I'm saying? So do your work. Um, I'm trying to think about this. Anybody else, anything else I want to share? Uh, like, I got a question. Yes, sir. Yeah, so, you know, just that process of um, the identity of being an athlete, when did you, how long did it take you to, you know, really be comfortable with the fact that you're no longer going to be playing the game? And then how did you deal with the pressure from whether that be family members, friends, 
and them still seeing you in that light of a potential professional athlete? You know, how did, how did you deal with that struggle? Man, so the first part of your question, and thank you for that, Coach Weave. The first part is, I don't know if I fully let go of that identity as a as an athlete. I'll still be run, walking around the house juking the walls and stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> but at the same time, <laughs> at the same time, it, it did take me a couple of years because I felt I felt ashamed almost, like I was saying, right? Because I felt like I didn't have the type of career I wanted, and then also I didn't know, know what else I could be good at, at outside of football. So that was a challenge for me. But what eventually started to happen was, like I was saying, I had a shift where it's like, I don't have to just be like, okay, I'm no longer an athlete. Time to grow up. Time to like walk around and just, you know, be boring or do whatever people do. But, you know, it's, I had a shift where I was like, man, I still have all this drive inside of me. I'm just going to take that and pour it into things that are important to me. Um, and I'm going to start building. And then to answer your question about the, were you talking about pressure from family members, meaning like pressure, like what are you going to be doing? Like, what, what are you doing next? Or is that what you're asking? Well, I think it's a sense of, like you said, we, we, we all we all have a, a, a purpose of why we're doing this, meaning af, af, athletics. You know, we want to be able, like you said, um, your, your friend wanted to buy a house for his, for his mom. And we want to be able to repay those people that supported us, you know, through our whole journey. And when we get to the end of the road, and it's not exactly what we thought it was going to be, you know, just that pressure of feeling like, like you said, that shame of like, we let, let those people down. How did you make that transition? You know, was there any kind of, you know, was there a mental battle? Was there depression? You know what I mean? How, how, did, how did you come? Great question. Thank you for that, Coach Weave. I think what it was, man, was um, I felt like I didn't have a choice because I looked at it like, okay, I don't have football. Like that's one of my goals too. I want to, I want to pay off my mom and dad's house to move them out here to Texas where, where living's a little cheaper. You know what I'm saying? So that's still one of my goals. And so when I wake up every day, everything that I do is centered around my work, but also I have that kind of lingering to where I can look at that and be like, okay, I can't use football to do that anymore, obviously, but I still have all the skills that I got from football. And same thing applies to all the athletes on this call. Whatever your sport is, you have so many skills that you can use. The same thing that made you great at your sport, of course, you're athletically gifted. You know, your parents have good genes, but also you work to get here. Like you work to put yourself in a position where you earned a D1 scholarship. Like that work ethic, whatever your goals are that you had, the vision that you had during sport, while you were playing your sport, if you don't reach those, just take all that same stuff and apply it to a different vehicle, a vehicle that's true to you. Once again, not just for money, but a vehicle that's true to you. And that vehicle will take you to places beyond your wildest dreams. You know, I always say like, try to build a life for someone that you love. Like, that's advice I give to people too. Like build a life for yourself as if you're building a life for someone you love. And a lot of people kind of struggle with self-love. That's a whole nother subject. But if you can learn to be like, I think too many of us, especially men get into a mode of like, I'm just going to sacrifice and I'm going to build and I'm going to work my fingers to the bone. And that's cool, but you could do that and still have a good time. It's not going to be fun all the time. Of course, we all, all of us, as much as we enjoy our work, we still have to do things that we don't necessarily want to do, but you don't have to be in that mode all the time. I see too many people, they wear like a badge of honor where they're just, they're doing things that they hate when it's like, oh, you know, I got, I got a family to feed or this and that. But it's like, what example are you setting? You know what I mean? I'll give you an example of my parents. Um, and I know my mom is probably gonna listen to this recording. She's gonna be so mad at me, but I love you, mom. So what a, I watched my mom and dad sacrifice for my brother and I, um, and they gave us a great life. Like they, they worked extremely hard in, in both of their jobs to put us in a good position. And so I saw that work ethic, but what I also saw is my mom and dad coming home drained, exhausted, complaining about the work day, um, unsatisfied, unfulfilled. On Sunday nights, you know, I call them the Sunday night blues, like, man, got to go back to work, you know, uh, Monday, don't talk to me till I have my coffee. Thank God it's Friday. You know, all these things that people say. And so that was my example growing up, like, okay, I want to work hard, but I also want to be doing something that's meaningful to me. So I don't have to ever be in that space. And it was scary because I saw myself going into that space after college. Like I said, the role was zero. Eventually I got into recruiting and I was, I was making great money and, and managing teams with that, but it was starting to creep in. So that's when I knew it was time to make a pivot, you know? Um, but yeah, that's, that's what I would say about that. And I think that for some of you guys, just go ahead, Aswan. 
I thought you were going to say something. Yeah, I'll let you finish. I'll let you finish. Okay. I was just going to say that, just quick advice before I forget this thought. To those of you guys who are going to be, because there is going to be a lot of trial and error, realistically. Like, I want you to spend time being intentional about where you're going. But also, when you graduate, some of you guys, just to make ends meet, you got to do what you got to do. But never, like I said, never settle and also look at the people who are, you know, your managers and your supervisors. So when you get into your first role out of college, you want to look at these people and be like, do I want to be in those in their shoes, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now? And if the answer is no, then you need to make an adjustment and figure out a different field to where you have people or mentors who you can look to and be like, OK, if I just follow these people's footsteps because I like the way they're living, then I'll be in their shoes. So that's all I want to say on that. It's all you guys want. Well, I mean, the, the question I have, well, first of all, Izzy, Coach Weave, as an alum, as a former player, I got to echo what Todd said in terms of just thank you for doing the work you've done because, man, 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 if, if I was on campus with you guys, we would have been, it would have been a completely different experience. But in regards to my question, though, I got to go back to uh, something Kanye West said. He said, the concept of school seems so secure. And when you mentioned something about, I took notes, I got it written down, a six-figure income, you put, you put off this feeling of, well, first of all, when you're on campus and all of you guys go through this, I know exactly what you're going through. You're walking across this great pond, there's a waterfall, someone's doing your laundry, the grass is cut, you got your meals paid for, everything is just lovely. Everything is screaming complacency, everything. Even if you don't want it, even if you're a driven person, you're being pushed into this complacent way of living. Now you guys have an indoor facility, so you don't got to practice when it's too cold, all that If you can kind of, speak on how to combat that secure feeling that's inevitable when you're on a college campus. Because just like Kanye said, that concept of you just being on campus is putting off this secure feeling like automatically someone's just gonna give you six figures because you have a piece of paper. So there's little things that you guys, and this is a question more so that you can answer. You guys have to do little things, little crazy things. People are gonna call you crazy, but you have to do little things to fight that feeling of security because like he said, and I've kept up with Taj for a great deal of time now, there are people who are going to school or doing things like in the workplace. They're not just resting on the fact that they're on a university. They're actually in the work. They're actually going to community college and they're working. They're getting experience. So in many ways, you guys are behind the eight ball because of the fact that you have this feeling of security. So if you can kind of speak on some of the little things that they can be doing to fight that complacency, man, I think it'll be great. Bro, that's a great point you bring up. Thank you for sharing that, man. You always come through with the heat, Aswan. That's why I love you, man. Um, you actually made me think of something, man. I want to tell a quick story. I might have told you this. You remember Elena, uh, the girl I was dating my senior year. She said to me one time after, after because she was a regular student. She went to a totally different school in New Jersey. But after I was done, after I played my final game, she was like, I don't think you realize how spoiled you've been these past four years. And guys, I was hot. I was heated. Like, what are you talking about? Spoiled? Do you know how... Do you know for how many years I had to bust my ass in 5 a.m. practices? Like, what do you mean spoiled? Like, I earned every bit of this. But what I missed was is exactly what Aswan is talking about, that we live in this bubble where we're catered to. You know, you got people helping you with your papers and, and bringing your books to you. And all of that is great. Like, you earn that experience. Like I said, you earn that to be able to, to play at that level and get all the things that come with it. But it's a totally different ball game once you walk across that stage. And we're not, me and Aswan aren't talking about this for scare tactic scare tactics it's just so that I think he's trying to get at having a sense of urgency about you don't have as much time to prepare as you think you do so if you can start preparing right now then you'll have a softer landing if you can come up with that clear vision right now for what you want to be doing then you can get started on it before you graduate and when you graduate okay everything might not be glamorous you might have to move back with the family for a little bit or, or live with you know five roommates just to make ends meet but at least you can come from a place where you're like I know in two years, three years, four years, I want to be here. I know that I want to be there. And that's a totally different ball game than versus when Aswan and I graduated and we're like, I need to get a job. I don't even know where to start. I don't even know what I want to do. I don't even know who I am. So it all comes back to being, you know, go ahead, bro. And what, well, one more thing I think they got to hear because you're, you're kind of a modest guy and you haven't told this story. But when Todd first, when he was like in his senior year, he was making beats. And one of the things that he did is he went to parties on campus and he would sample his beats to parties on campus. 
So those are little things that he's, yeah, everyone's having fun, but then there's someone out there that's, wait a minute, he's behind the scenes getting people a sample of his music, little things like that. Now that's something that no professor can teach you. There's not a, not a coach. Coach Weaver can't teach you those things. I mean, like, like Coach P is not going to tell you to do those things. You have to have it in your own head. This is what I want to do with my life. And so I'm going to take the initiative. You have a golden opportunity, but if you don't take advantage of it, there are people who have to drive to campus, drive and deal with traffic, buy their own breakfast. They don't get it served to them, do their own laundry. You think that you're going to get into the real world and you're going to outwork them if you don't do those little things? So the urgency that he's talking about is the fact that you have a golden opportunity and it's very easily could just slip through your fingers because I'll just say some of you guys are spoiled. Straight up, we're going to keep it real. We're going to keep it real. This is athletes, all that. Some of you guys are completely spoiled. Don't let it be you because you're on this call. You're listening. All of you guys should be taking notes. This is a. This is not a joke. All right, I'm, 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 I have a podcast. I'm going to shut up. Hey, right, plug the podcast, bro. Go ahead. Tell them where to move swiftly podcast. Right. Yeah, move swiftly. Right. Right. Izzy, 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 Izzy. Yeah, just expect some messages from me, man, because I'm going to keep talking. Please man. do. Yeah, I'm going to keep actually, talking, man. But actually, before we go off to uh, – before I hand it off to, to, to Taj, I think, you know, for, for me, like, one of my biggest uh, takeaways, like, you know, after re reading, you know, your, your book, I think, um, you know, that first chapter – when you were talking about how that moment when you were in your bedroom and how like you were reflecting, you know, for, for, for you seniors that are in the space and obviously, you know, your juniors will get to that point. You're going to hit that moment where like, and which is why, for example, a lot of the assignments is about reflecting, you know, like don't go through the motions, reflect on what, what you learned every year. You should be reflecting. You should have that moment where you collect, you know, you, you sit, you sit in a moment of silence. You think about what you, what, what you've accomplished. You think about the connections that you made, not only within your team, but also outside of your team. Um, and, and, and because of what that's going to force you to do is like really think about, all right, like who are who is part of my team? Like, what is my home base? Um, and, 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 I, and I remember and I, when, I, when, I first, when, I, when I read that first chapter, um, it brought me back and I, and, I, and I got emotional because I, I didn't realize that, you know, I'm 37 now. And when I was 20, 22, 23, when I played my last game, you know, it. It, it took me back to that moment where like, I felt that I failed. I felt that I, I did not achieve what I was supposed to achieve, right? But I didn't realize that up until that moment, like everything that I, everything that I achieved, like I earned every single thing about that. You know, mo all of you have earned, have earned this moment to be here, you know, but it's, 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 it's on us, it's on you to take that next step, to take that, that next initiative, to, to really think about like, well, who are the people that are in my corner? Who and, and 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 not to limit yourselves to your teammates, you know, because it's very easy for us to just limit ourselves to a teammates to, to like to, to that particular network. Really thinking about how to how to how to expand your network because you never know. Like after you graduate, like you might graduate with a business degree, but when you go out into the world, you you, you know what, business may not may not be for me. I want I want to go into education, right? And again, like that's that's just that's just a, an example. But if you only stuck, if you if you were only stuck with one particular network and didn't expand it, then it would be it would be even more difficult for you to expand and go into other networks. So it's very important, you know, especially like with 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 your sport, you know, it's great build that network within your sport, but also build the networks that, that network within your classmates, you know, your peers, the folks that you live with, you know, and not, and not only that, even folks in high school, you know, folks like that 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 you feel that had a had a, had a huge impact on you. And don't forget about no. Don't forget about your your professors. You know, building that strong, deep connection with your professors will go will take you for you know further than just like going to class, just trying to pass the class to be on the field. But I'm gonna pass it off to Todd. Sorry. No, that that was great. You made me think of something else too, because I know you uh you had jumped off that call. I think it was like a week or two ago with the mentor call. And one of the things you asked me to speak about on that call was networking across and networking up. So you just did such a great job of talking about networking across, get outside of your, you know, your athletic group. Um, another thing you can do to prepare and to add one's point about, you know, starting early and putting yourself in position is networking up. Meaning if you know, there was a young lady on that call, I can't remember her name, but she was a freshman and she was already thinking like this. And she knows that she wants to be an athletic trainer. So I'm like, I know you're a freshman. I know you have a lot of college ahead of you still, but if I'm in your shoes, whether you're a freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, I'm reaching out to people who are athletic trainers. I was at, and I'm, I'm being specific. She, she wanted to move to a, to a very specific area. So let's say I'm a freshman in college, right? And I know that I want to be an athletic trainer, but I want to live in LA. What I'm doing is I'm going on LinkedIn. I'm putting 
current student athlete at Stony Brook University, you know, future athletic trainer. I'm going on LinkedIn. I'm blowing up everybody in LA who's an athletic trainer at UCLA, at USC, at, you know, anywhere, anywhere you can think of. It doesn't even have to be out of college. It could be anywhere. They're just, they have athletic trainer in their bio. I'm reaching out to those people so that I can connect with them and I can be on their radar because those might be the people who become my mentors. Those might be the people who can give me a foot in the door. If anything, I can just have a conversation with them and they'll help put me in position or give me some advice about what they were doing their freshman year, or their junior year, or their senior year. You know what I mean? So networking up is huge too. If you have, I, I wish I would have done this sooner. If you have an idea, even the smallest idea, oh, I think I might want to do this when I graduate. I think I might want to have this type of position. I think I might want to be in this industry. Look for those people. And LinkedIn is a great place to do it because you can literally look up what someone's job title is. Like if I had LinkedIn, I think LinkedIn was around, but I definitely wasn't using it when I graduated. But if you find those people who are in your field and are already in the shoes that you want to be in, definitely reach out to those people. And you'd be surprised how many people are willing to have a conversation with you. Like the people, because they remember being in your shoes. Don't let them be a former athlete. Don't let the people you're reaching out to be former athletes. And, and they you reaching out to them as a current athlete or a recent grad telling them you just graduated and you want to do X, Y, Z. You'd be surprised how many people will respond to you and have a conversation with you and probably make connections for you and, and help you get a foot in the door. So that, yeah, that's, that's just my last that's, piece of advice. That's actually a plug for one of the extra credit assignments for this class, which is conducting a informational interview. Uh, so basically what, what they're doing um, is, you know, they're identifying a person in, in, in whatever career field that, that they might be interested in. And they have to go actively and interview that person, you know, and again, like, it's all like what this is all about is about you taking a positive risk on yourself. That's all it is. It's taking a positive risk because then the more positive risk that you take on yourself, the easier this is, this will all become, you know, because I, what I, what, what I will tell you, you know, is that this is not something that is easy. This is hard. This is incredibly hard. You know, we're, we're, we're talking about the end of a career. You know, none of us want, want, want like none of us are comfortable talking about that. You know, but it, that's just like with life, just like just like with time, this it's not finite. It's it will it will happen at some point. For some of us, it'll happen in, in a year. For some of us, it'll happen ten years on the road. But it's going to happen. You know, but but what's important is that what are you doing now to make sure that you're prepared for that moment, because it will happen. But you have to be you have to take the steps. You know, even for for example, our seniors, and I'm and I'm glad I'm glad that Taza you you know, you addressed that. You know, like you, know, you, you you're experiencing the sense of loss. That's what this is. You know, it's you're experiencing the sense of loss. But you have to figure you be you know because you're in this class, and I'm glad that you did this. You took a positive risk on yourself. You know, and this is and this is and this is all for, this is for everybody else in the space. You know, for all the all the student athletes that you know throughout the semester that have been a part of this class is you took a positive risk on yourself, and that says a lot about you. It says a, it says a lot about you know what you are aspiring to do. It says a lot about who you are as a person, or like what's your character, and, and and I'm glad that you're in the space, and I'm glad you know we have ties. I'm glad that we have coaches here, um, and, and I'm glad that we also have you know guest student athletes who are in the space because I think it's important that you know we, we're not only just learning from you know you're not only just learning from your coaches, you're not only just learning from uh, athletic administration or alumni, but you're also learning from your, from each other. You know, like you are your network. Like everyone in this space right now, you this is a new network that all of you have have created. Although it's virtual, but you know you, you can put a face to a name, and I think that's important. So, yes, sir, man. Uh, oh, my bad. Go ahead, Coach Weed. Yeah, I, I just wanted to add. You know, that that wasn't LinkedIn you was using. That was MySpace. Just wanted to. Throw <laughs> Why are you trying to play <laughs> me like that, man? <laughs> but, I just uh, turned thirty, man. MySpace, <laughs> come on now. <laughs> but one of the one of the biggest struggles that I I, I dealt with. You know, just what Oswan brought up about um, being in that safe space as a student athlete um, is just, you know, uh, creating a resume. And I'm pretty sure, you know, Izzy, uh, this class um, provides that resource. Uh, but, but, but how was that process for you putting that first resume together? And then, you know, I remember when I was putting down references, man, it was all coaches, you know, that was <laughs> all I had, you know. So uh, what's your advice on, on that, you know, being in that situation and how can they take advantage of, of, of building that platform now? Well, I would say this, um, I, I got a couple of thoughts on that. So the first one is the girl I told you about who I was dating in senior year, who told me I was spoiled. She's the same one who helped me put my first resume together. So at least she was showing love because I had no clue where to start. Now, obviously, like you said, there's a ton of resources on campus. Izzy, you know, I'm sure Izzy has plenty of resources on resume. But one thing that I think these days is more important than the resume, because 
you know, most of these jobs, they just send your resume through a software and they're looking for keywords and all that type of stuff. The best thing you could do uh, is make sure you have some sort of presence, like, and you're putting out content, like back to the athletic trainer, the, the, the woman who was on the call a couple of weeks ago, like if I'm her, I would be on LinkedIn just talking about my expertise. You know what I mean? Like I would have my LinkedIn would be my resume, meaning that I'm in this program. This is what I'm doing. But also I'll be putting out some content about that, just sharing my expertise so that if I go into a job where people are looking me up, they see all this information, blogs, videos, things like that. I think I think we're living in a time where the resume is not as important because you can you can just Google like resume template. and You can throw something together. Um, you know, I had coaches on my on my reference to or just friends. I, I did the same thing, Coach We. But yeah, that's what I would say more so than the resume is just being focused on providing the value up front. For example, like, you know, I have a book on the very topic that I speak about. So, you know, if I go, if I wanted to get a job somewhere in an athletic department, that's going to set me apart from a different candidate because I have a book talking about athletes. You know what I mean? So if you have things that you're putting out into the world, like I said, blogs, videos, um, a lot of, a lot of athletes, a lot of students, I should say, a lot of college students are starting podcasts now. So if you're looking to get into a certain field, why not start a podcast? Check out anchor.fm, right down anchor.fm. It's a, it's a free way to start a podcast. You record it once and you upload it and it goes to, you know, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, both, as one and I both use that for our podcast. It's super easy. I could get on a Zoom call like this, you know, whatever industry I'm looking to get into as a college student. Like if I'm in college right now, I'm starting a podcast about whatever industry I'm looking to get into and I'm chopping it up with all my different, thank you, Izzy. I'm chopping it up with all my different peers who are in that same field, have that same major. We're chopping it up about things we're learning and I'm putting that out to the world. So I'm interviewing for a certain position. I'd be like, hey, check out my podcast. You know, I'll, I'll put my podcast in my resume. That's what I'll be doing these days. So I want to say something else too, before I forget, because I wrote it down. Um, when Izzy, Izzy, when you were sharing about like, and this is why I really love the work that you're doing, man. When you were talking about how you have it in the course, it's extra credit if you reach out and make a contact with somebody. So I want to say something about that to all the athletes on here listening. Like, is it great that you'll get extra credit for it? Yes. And shout out to Izzy for putting that in there. But don't just do it for the extra credit. Do it for your life. Izzy put that component in there, not just to give you extra credit, but so you can be set up for success. So definitely take advantage of that. And don't just, you know, do it once or twice or however many times it's required to get the extra credit. Keep on doing that for the rest of your life. To this day, I still reach out to people who are in a position that I want to be in or they're doing something that I feel like they could help me out and help pull me up, I still send out messages. I do this daily. Some of the best um, opportunities and things that, me being here right now is a result of me connecting with Izzy and reaching out to Izzy. I'm like life skills coordinator. Well, they didn't have one of those while I was at Stony Brook. Let me reach out to this man and see what kind of work he's doing. You fast forward, I send him my book and here I am speaking to you guys. So thing is, the magic happens based off of relationships. That's the last thing I wanna share on that. Um, and by the way, I know next week, I think it's next Thursday, correct me if I'm wrong, Izzy. I'm yeah, I'm coming. Okay, so I'm coming back. But what I want to do is I don't want to just be talking the whole time. Now I feel like you guys have a better understanding of who I am. And, and we've had a great conversation at the end of this, which is cool too. But I really want to open it up because I know that last that last session is really about it's called the career action plan. Is that what it's called, Izzy? Did I get that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what, what I'd like to do, just so you guys are kind of prepped for next Thursday is I want to have more of a discussion and a dialogue. So don't be shy, you know, because think about it like this. If you get on here and you share and you just talk about some things you're considering for your, your career action plan, or you just want to ask questions like, Taj, what would you do if you were me? Or, you know, I'm thinking about going this way, but I'm not sure. Like, what advice do you have? If you bring those type of questions, of course it can help you because I'll be able to just do some live coaching with you right there on the spot. And this is what I do for a living, folks. Keep that in mind. Um, I'll be able to do that on the spot, but also other people who are listening will be able to benefit from that. Like you might be a senior asking me a question about your life path and a freshman who wants to go into that same field just because they're listening to us having that dialogue could get help by that. So I just want to preface that next week is going to be very interactive. And also, I don't want you to feel like you can't share or, you, you know, don't be too worried about looking cool. Like you have people here who want to help you. So put the cool down for a second and, and just get some help and get some advice for people who have been in your shoes before. That's all I got, Izzy. I'm done. I know we're coming up on time, man. No, no. I definitely appreciate you. Thank you so much, Taj. Thank you so much, Coach Diamond Weaver and Coach uh, Aswan. Aswan, did I pronounce your name correctly? Just want to make sure. 
It was close. It was close. As oh. one. As one. There yeah. we go. As one. And you'll be the, uh, you'll probably be the first one from Stony Brook to actually call me by my real name. I was crunk out there. Oh no. <laughs> it's funny. I, I'm, I'm, a huge, I'm a huge stickler. I'm a huge stickler to calling people by their name. Because you there know you and folks folks have butchered my name my whole entire life and I would always want to make sure I got everyone's name correctly. Um but yeah, no, you know, so, yeah. if you see coach if you see coach B see ask him if he remembers a guy named Crunk. <laughs> <Coach P? laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. He called right, him Crunk. Yeah, go ahead, oh, Coach Crunk. Crunker, Crunk Co- Monster, something like that. Coach P don't remember the guys on his team right now, man. So that's that's hey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. Man. Well, he has to be like that. You got to find the next one. I, I, can, I can understand it now. So I don't take it personal. <laughs> All right. So uh, before I go into my uh, my spiel, again, I just want to thank you. Thank you, Taj, again for you know for being in the space. And we're looking forward to your next presentation. Um, definitely for the you know for the student athletes that you know uh, that volunteer that came in, came on here on their on their own free will. Uh, and, and and joined us. Thank you again. You learned something new, and I think you know. And again, thank you for all the student athletes that are you know that, that are enrolled in this class. Um, you've done an amazing job. You, you, again, you took another, a positive risk on yourself. Definitely want to thank our TA Emilio. And I, this is kind of like sounding like the last class. It's not a goodbye, but I'm just saying. Just again, I just want to continue to, to thank everyone for being in the space. And I, I want to say for you to for you to be engaged because uh, I know like many of you didn't didn't talk. But I can see, and you know, especially looking at looking at your faces, look at how engaged you are and how you're taking in the information. I think, that, and also that's very important. Um, so I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do right now, and I'm gonna stop the recording here.